Good morning, friends. We are continuing our lecture on elevator design. At a conceptual stage, what we have realized that if I have got a horizontal tail like this, the elevator roughly I can take 40 to 50 percent of the cord as the elevator cord. That's not a bad choice to start with. But let us not forget why do we need an elevator? Elevator is a part of a control, it is a longitudinal control, meaning thereby you want to fly the machine at different, different CL. Okay? And if you go back, because we are designing statically stable airplane, so if it is CM versus alpha like this, we know that this is the alpha trim at which if I provide enough dynamic pressure or if I fly at a correct altitude and speed, relative air speed, I should be able to produce lift, we should balance weight if I am aiming for a cruise flight. If I want lift for maneuver, then that should be, lift should be enough to produce that acceleration and you know that lift equal to NW, N is the load factor. But the question is, if I am flying at this alpha or corresponding CL and if you want to fly at this alpha, let us say or a corresponding CL, uh, maintaining a level flight, then the aircraft being statically stable, it will automatically oppose it and it will generate negative pitching moment. So, if you want to increase alpha, it will automatically generate negative pitching moment. But if you want to really fly here, trim the airplane here, so somehow you have to nullify this, right? Nullify this moment. How can I do that? I do it by using elevator, I will deflect the elevator up, but then there will be force downward and CG somewhere here. So, it will produce a nose up moment and that should be equal to the negative moment generated inherently by the airplane being statically stable. This much we understand. Then we also revise that delta E equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by DCL trim into CL trim and where we know that D delta E by D C L trim is minus D C M by D C L by C M delta E and where C M delta is the elevator control power. That means how much moment per unit deflection of this elevator will generate that is what is related to CM delta E, that is DCM by D delta E, how much pitching moment it will generate per unit deflection of elevator. Right? This relationship is important because it tells you if I want to fly at this CL trim, that is suppose I want to fly at this CL trim, then how much the elevator deflection is required to nullify this negative moment is given by this relationship where I need to know what is CM naught and what is CM delta E and then minus DCM by DCL by CM delta E into CL trim and you know DCM by DCL is minus static margin and as a designer you have decided a priori that you will be designing the airplane for a particular static margin maybe 10 percent, 15 percent, that is your choice. As I repeatedly say, I start with 15 percent and I know that by Murphy law, there will be CG limitation will come and I will approach towards 10 percent. Okay. Now, the question is what is CM delta E? How this CM delta E gets linked with the elevator sizing here? That is important although we have taken 40 to 50 percent as an initial conceptual stage. To understand this, we will have slight uh, revision of one of the problems which we have done in our stability classes. 
in the earlier courses. And before that, let us summarize what we are talking that I can trim the airplane at different CL or alpha and for different different delta E. Different delta E requirement will be there if you want to trim it here, here or here. And the question is, uh, is my elevator enough powerful to generate or to trim the airplane? That is the question, right? Let us solve an example and then we will see that, yes, does it make sense or not. Please understand, the elevator maximum deflection will be required either during landing, that is a low speed, or during takeoff, which is also almost V stall, speed equal to V stall, 10 percent more than V stall. So, if you want to trim the airplane, the delta E max will be near takeoff or landing conditions. And also, we know that during landing, because of ground effect, I must keep some extra delta E available, extra delta E up available, right? Okay. Let us say I have got an airplane for CM about CG is minus 0 0.20 minus 0 0.035 alpha. Let us see we have an aircraft which, which has a wing fuselage combination and CM, CG we are getting like this. That is, if I plot CM versus CG, this will look like somewhere here, something like this. And this value will be 0 0.20 minus. And during landing, you want to trim the airplane, trim the aircraft at alpha equal to 10 degrees. Let us say this is CM alpha, which is minus 0 0.035 per degree. Right? If you want to convert CM alpha, from per degree to per radian, you have to simply multiply by 57.3 roughly and you will get per radian. So, what is the problem? Problem here is this aircraft has CM versus alpha like this, but I have to fly and trim the airplane at alpha equal to 10 degree. That means what? If I want to fly at alpha equal to 10 degree, this airplane at 10, it will generate automatically a negative moment. So, I have to counter the negative moment. In a sense, that CM naught, I have to ensure it is raised to this point, right? Then only I can trim it here. Right? Here, the CM naught was negative. That is why I cannot trim the airplane at a positive angle of attack. To trim that airplane at a positive angle of attack, I will have to use elevator because I have to shift this point from here to here. Although if, are, if your configuration is like this, this is not a good design. We always try to see that the CM naught is positive, right? It is for an example, it will give you a wider understanding of what is being done. The question here is what is the elevator size? so that I can trim this airplane here. That is the question, okay? Now, let us see at alpha equal to 10 degree, how much moment will be generated? Right? That is only we have to nullify. That is at alpha 10 degree, this much moment will be generated, negative moment. That I have to nullify, so that here the moment is 0, so that it becomes the trim point. That I can easily find from here, Cm Cg at alpha equal to 10 degree will be minus 0 0.20 minus 0 0.035 into 10 because the CM alpha is per degree and if I do that, then I get the value as minus 
zero point five five. So that much moment I have to nullify, right? And that will decide what is the elevator size. Now this delta C m, which is minus point zero point five five. That should be nullified. So I write delta C m is equal to C m delta E into delta E. I have to nullify this delta C m by using elevator, and it's obvious that elevator should be up. Now the question is, how do I visualize what is delta E, what is C m delta E as far as numbers are concerned? We realize this delta C m is minus 0.55, which has to be nullified. So I am asking a question. How much elevator and how much CM delta E value the aircraft should be able to generate? And let us see what is CM delta E. Remember, CM delta E is given as minus V H nita C L alpha tail into tau. V H we have already assumed. Nita I can take one, and once I have selected a symmetric tail, then I know C L alpha. C L two dimensional alpha of the tail. So then from there, I convert to three D C L alpha tail as C L alpha two D by one plus C L alpha two D by pi aspect ratio E. You can take E as point eight. So you have a value of C L alpha three D, which value is here, which is for tail. I do not know what is the tau, although when I have assumed 50% of the horizontal stabilizer area as elevator. I can easily do it like this. I have a chart, very popular chart, AC by S tail, and this goes something like this. And this value is roughly is 0.8, and this corresponds to a ratio of 0.7. And typically at 0.5, you will find this value will come around 0.6. If this is 0.5, this is one way to find out what is the value of tau. Since we have already taken 50% or 40% called elevator, so you can easily find out AC by ST and then find out the value of tau. But what we will be doing here a little different, since I know. I have to trim this airplane at alpha equal to 10 degrees, and at present, I am neglecting ground effect. Right? Just for case of uh, and demonstration, let's say I am neglecting the ground effect. That means. Either I have extra elevator taken care when I have said elevator is minus 25 and plus 25. I have already ensured that my elevator is effective up to minus 35, right? That may be a little bit of higher side, but yes, the question is you need to keep that margin, right? So in this example, I am neglecting this ground effect. If you and as a and as a as a practitioner, you must keep that seven eight degrees margin. Okay. That means effectively, if your elevator is within plus twenty five minus twenty five, you should not operate beyond seventeen degree elevator deflection, right? Roughly. Okay. Let's say we are uh, neglecting this ground effect. Now this is C M delta E expression, and C M delta E, if you see. Is delta C M by delta delta E, and we are taking minus 0.55 by delta delta E is. Let's say we are using 25 degrees, so this will become minus 0.022 per degree. You could see that in per radian. You have to simply multiply this number by roughly 57.3, so it will come around minus one, around that range, minus one, 1.1. That is typical value of CM delta E. So if I know CM delta E, then I can easily find out tau is equal to CM delta E divided by VH nita C 
CL alpha tail from here and let us say when you have conceptualized the VH you have taken around 0 0.66, these are some number which could be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, let us say you have taken 0 0.6 and this gentleman is 1 and let us say this is around 3.9 per radian, right. And CM delta you also you have to put in per radian and if you put that you will find tau will come around 0.5 roughly. But if you see tau 0.5 means if you see this chart which I have given in your class tau 0.5 means tau 0.5 will mean AC by S tail around 0.4 that is 40 percent. Okay, that is how the guidelines are generated. Let the cord be 40 percent of the horizontal tail or 50 percent. But as a designer, you should know that if I take around 40 to 50 percent of the cord, uh, stabilize the cord at, as elevator, I will get tau around 0.5. That is a good number. So, once we get tau, now so, once I get tau as 0.5, what I do, I cross check, I come here, I again see this chart, which gives around, which is 0.8 and this is AC by ST. I try to check how much this actually means for 0.5, tau is 0.5 somewhere here and if you see that graph, it will come down to again around 0.4 that is AC by ST will be approximately 0.4. So, that again comes back to the understanding is a 40 percent. So, you can easily write here, if I want to trim this, I need area as elevator area as 0.4 times horizontal tail area and you have already VH you have rough idea of what is the horizontal tail area. So, you can easily find out elevator area which again tells you that only 40 percent of that area if it is a rectangular one just take the 40 percent cord elevator that will suffice your initial estimates. This is clear. So, what I have tried to uh, mix two things one is we are taking based on historical data the VH around 0.5 to 0.8 or 0.7, then elevator cord around 40 percent to 50 percent of horizontal tail cord and we have demonstrated one example and you see that the numbers classically also comes within this domain. So, whatever historical data is there, when they have been correlated, when they have been converted into database, this physics was always there, right. So, at a conceptual stage, if you use those data or the data sheet, you are near the solution point. However, in, after doing this, you need to do analysis and refine the design, right. A good design, unless it has a good beginning, it can never become excellent, right. So, beginning is extremely important and that is the purpose of this course. Thank you very much.